Hello guys, it's Robin here. So Hitfilm 2 came out yesterday, which is pretty awesome, and one of the major new features is the ability to import 3D models and composite them directly inside Hitfilm. Even before the software was released, I heard many people wanting a tutorial about exporting models from Blender to Hitfilm, so I decided to make one. Okay, so in this video I will start in Blender and show you how to prepare a model for use in Hitfilm, set up the materials and export it to a file Hitfilm can work with. After that, we'll go into HitFilm, import the model, refine its materials some more, and finally put together a 3D scene with it, doing the lighting using several 3D objects and animate parts of them. I will not try to make this look good, I'm completely going to script grading and all that tedious stuff, I'm just going to create the basic setup. I will upload the project files from this tutorial so you can download them, and I'll put the link to them in the description. Also, this is kind of my first tutorial dealing with this kind of stuff, so I'd be happy about all feedback you can give me. But now, let's get to it. Okay, so we'll start inside Blender. I'm using version 2.64 here. And I will prepare this little Android guy to use it inside HitFilm, set up its materials and finally export it. So the first thing we're gonna do is, um, I modeled this with uh, various modifiers. So I have applied subsurf modifiers to almost all components of this model so that they are nice and smooth. HitFilm doesn't do any subsurfing, so I have to apply all those modifiers for each object this is comprised of. Then we have to set up animation groups. So um, if for example I want to move his head separately or his arms, they have to be uh, separate objects, which they are in most of the cases here already. You can see that in the outliner up in the top right corner here. We have the left arm, the right arm, the body, the head, the left leg, the right leg and the antennas. And so one thing uh, is that I don't want these antennas to animate separately, I want them to move with the head. So we have to um, mark both these heads and uh, join them by pressing Ctrl and J so that they are now one object, which is now called antennas. I'll quickly rename that to head. Okay, so now we have an Android that consists of some meshes that are all just modeled without any modifiers. So we can now go ahead and set up the materials for each. So I'm going to select the body as it's the main part, switch over to the materials tab, create a new material. Oops, no. Actually, we have to make sure we are in the Blender render engine. So I'm not sure how um, HitFilm will work with cycles, but uh, the Blender engine will work. So we'll create a new material in the Blender engine. There we just set up the diffuse color, which for an Android, of course, I want to have some sort of uh, lime green. The specular color, I will make a really light lime green, not as saturated as uh, the diffuse color. And I think that's about it. The rest of the materials we will adjust inside HitFilm. Now just apply this material to all other objects by simply selecting them and selecting the body as the last object which, it, which is indicated by the lighter orange line around it. Now press Ctrl L for link and link the materials together so that they all have the same material. Now we are almost ready for export. Now we just have to make sure that nothing else in this scene exists. So um, because the entire scene will be exported into the 3D file and everything that's inside there as well. So I have one object here, which is uh, two cylinders, uh, which I used to carve out the eyes of the Android. We have to delete them so that they don't get exported as well. And so we will do with the camera that's still existent here. Okay, after we've done that, we just go to the file menu, select export and choose the wavefront.obj version as this is an object file that HitFilm can read. So you see I have already um, exported this here. Uh, I will just do this again. Mark android.obj, click export obj and we're good to go. Okay, so now we have an, our Android exported as an OBJ file. This also created an .mtl file, which are the materials. I'm not sure if HitFilm uses these, but I'll leave them there just in case. Now we're going to into HitFilm, and I want to set up a scene that's a bit like this, uh, which I find, uh, which I found on the internet, just googling Android in the Google Image Search. 
So we'll go into HitFilm, and uh, I'm using a project with uh, 1080p at 30 frames per second. And I'm just switching the color bit depth to 16-bit float, which will give more accurate color, le color rendering. Uh, you can choose this uh, if your machine is uh, good enough to handle this. So inside HitFilm, the first thing we are going to do is um, put in our android.obj, which uh, drag and drop cur currently uh, doesn't work, unfortunately, so we are going to use the import dialog. We are going to import a 3D model, of course, and select our android.obj file. Now we are presented with this um, nice interface to import this model. Just rename this to just Android. And here we have a preview on the left side, which shows us how the Android will look like with the current settings. So the first thing over here is uh, the Groups tab. And there we have several groups. By clicking on them, we can determine which one this is. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't uh, use the name we set up in Blender, so we have to try this out on our own. Now, there's a checkbox for each of these groups, which will indicate if this will be separately animatable or not. So the legs, of course, I want to animate separately. The other leg was group 3. Yeah. Group 1 is the left arm, which I also want to animate, the head I want to animate, and the right arm I also want to animate. Group 5 is the body. I won't, do the ch uh, I won't check the check mark on this, uh, because um, I will animate this by just using the word transform. I'll get into that later. OK, now we have the materials tab, where we can define our materials. Now we have two materials here. One is the default material, which uh, isn't used in this, uh, in this model. Uh, the material we are caring about is material.001. By clicking on it, you can see that it is applied to every surface of this model. So we're just dealing with this one. Uh, opening it uh, presents us with a number of op options. There we have a diffuse texture file name, uh, which we could use if we have textured this, but this is just a plain material, so we won't use this. Specular texture file name, uh, we could import a map there uh, with black and white values, um, or I think even color values, uh, which determines which parts of the model will be reflective. Then we have the diffuse color. We did already set this up in Blender. We could change this here again if we wanted to. And also the specular color, which you remember I put this to a lighter lime color. I think it didn't uh, import this correctly. I would like to uh, have this. I would like to uh, have this uh, much more lighter color. Okay, so the ambient color, I don't know exactly what this does. Uh, playing around with this doesn't give any results so far, so I'll just leave it at the default black. The emissive color is probably uh, just uh, what it sounds like. If we put one of these up, uh, the object will seem like it's emitting light, which we don't want in this case. So the shininess, uh, I don't know what's exactly happening here. I think this still is a bug. Um, it Normally it has a maximum value of uh, 100, but from this model it imports a value of 384. I don't know why. I will just leave this uh, as it is, because uh, lowering it will just blow out the highlights on this model, which is not what we want. So I'll just leave it at the maximum 100. The diffuse reflectivity is how much the environment map, I'll set this up later, um, will affect the general lighting of the object. So um, this uh, makes the model in this case just much brighter. Um, I'll just set this to about 20, which works nice uh, from what I found. The specular reflectivity is basically the same, um, but this controls how much it actually reflects those, uh, not just how much light is given on the model. So here you can see there's um, some sort of image reflected on the head of the Android. Um, I don't want it to be that lossy, so let's turn this down again to uh, about 20 also. And the last one, the opacity, is uh, pretty self-explanatory. So if we put this down, uh, we have a semi-transparent Android, which is not what we want in this case. Just turn this up again to 100. Then, last, we have the Advanced tab, which uh, contains some, uh, as it says, more advanced options, like flip the Y and Z axis. If we use this, uh, the Android will get flipped over, um, which can be useful if the model is not imported correctly. Uh, center anchor point is just um, 
to uh, define the anchor point of the model so that it's really in the center if it did not get exported correctly. Um, auto normalize is that uh, the size of the model will um, actually be something uh, usable and not uh, really much too big or, or much too. Uh, too small to use in your project so that you would have to scale it up. Uh, this will just ensure that it um, has a reasonable size. The normals, flip normals, is um, something that does not have much effect here. I won't dive into that. Uh, maybe the HitFilm team can explain what that does. Okay, after we have set this all up, um, we click on create and the model instantly appears in the media panel. And now with this uh, little gear or by clicking uh, by right clicking on the object and clicking properties we get this dialog again uh, note that we can set up the groups here again so the groups we have to set up at the import um, the materials though we can also uh, like we wish um, every time we want okay so now that we successfully imported our android object it gets to positioning it on a timeline and uh, doing some lighting and compositing. So we first make a new composite shot at the default settings. Just name this Android. And we'll drop in the Android uh, from the media panel. On doing this, it will ask you to create a new camera. If you didn't switch it off, I did because it's just annoying me. So now we have this basically unshaded Android model in our viewer. Um, you can see that it's fully 3D already, but it does not have any lighting. So let's set that up. I'm first just doing a very normal light, which I will set to a directional light, as it should emulate some kind of sun. Uh, just drag this around a bit until it fits what I want. Ah, I like that. And then I will create another light. This is also going to be a directional light as I want to use it as a fill light from the other side with uh, maybe a quarter of the intensity of the original light. So put this to the other side basically. And this will just serve as a kind of fill light for the Android like this. So you can see the difference. So we have at least some light from the left. So to give this Android uh, a little bit more of realism, uh, we are going to go into the layer again. And under the material um, option, we will choose, uh, we will open the ambient occlusion and set it on. So this will just add a bit of self shading onto the model. As you can see here, when I turn it on and off again, can see here around the base of the antennas there's some shading going on if I switch this on and off. I'm not uh, going to the settings of the ambient occlusion here as I don't understand them fully myself yet but uh, you can just uh, play with them and look for a better result if you want to. So now uh, you might have noticed this option here that is called environment map. So we can actually use an environment map to uh, light this uh, interactively with a scene. So, um, wait a second, I just have to find the folder I have it in. There it is. It's called harop.jpg. It's, um, I think it's included with the HitFilm 2 release, at least it was with the beta. Um, I just drag that on the timeline underneath everything else and disable it. And then in the Android again, in the material properties, under environment map, choose use layer and choose the harbor layer. This will cause the androids to reflect this harbor layer as you can probably best see on its head. Well, wait a second, that's the view up here. Yeah, you can see that at the back especially that there are some nice reflections on the head which give it, which give it a bit more of realism. Is it the view again? And so now I told you we are going to um, try and recreate this scene, sort of. And uh, what's now missing is a ground plane.
And I will use just a simple texture of that. Uh, um, I found this one on Google, just uh, do something for yourself. I don't know if I have the rights to uh, distribute them to you. Um, so I'll drag that underneath the Android and put it to 3D plane. Turn it around by 90 degrees. Oops, that was the wrong here. Orientation, that's the one. Um, then I will put the plane down so that the Android is basically sitting on it. Wait a second, let me switch to front view so I can better see what I'm doing. There we go. And now just uh, adjusting the view a little bit so that we already have kind of the positioning that we have here that the Android is looking to the lower left of, uh, to the lower right sorry of the frame and then we can adjust the plane so that it fills the entire frame by upping the scale to about 2000 percent right so now we have one Android but it's not casting any shadows on the plane yet which makes it look really fake so we're going to go into the Android again and check the cast shadows option. It's still not uh, showing any shadows, that's because we have to set our lights so that they cast shadows and now we have some nice shadowing here which makes this much more realistic. Um, I think we can dial up the shadow diffusion a little bit so it gets a bit softer. You also might notice that the edges of the Android, Android are a bit ragged here um, if we switch uh, the render to enter aliased uh, that will solve this uh, at least to some extent but uh, for performance sake I will set this back to full so now it's just a matter of uh, putting a few other androids in and we will do that now by uh, dragging them into the timeline a few times more now important is that you don't just drag them in the timeline anywhere like this because now you have two objects but they are not rendering uh, accurately in 3D space so if I take the second Android and put it here um, you will notice that if I orbit around them um, this works fine but as soon as I go the other way around uh, the first Android still goes in front of the second Android this is because um, the Z compositing uh, works by determining the uh, position of the layers on the 3D uh, on the um, composite shot timeline. So we can't do them as separate object, but instead we can open the original Android layer and open the models tab and put the Android in there. So now we have two Androids in the same. Oops, sorry. In the same layer on the timeline, and they are now compositing like they should. We'll just rename this. This is going to be Android 1 and this is going to be Android 2. And you can now see that we have um, both these Androids in the models tab of the um, Android layer and we can animate them separately by just manipulating their transform values and whatnot. Um, okay, so what were the positions here? Okay, um, gonna move this one, nope, that one, a little bit to the back and rotate it away from the camera and then we will do another Android which is going to be Android 3 and move that way to the front and rotate it like so. Uh, yeah. And finally a fourth Android and oops, Android 4 which will go in the back and we will now flip this one over as we can see here here's one that supposedly tripped over something some invisible wire wire or so so we're going to into its transforms and rotated on the x-axis by 90 degrees push it down till it 
touches the floor or until it seems to touch the floor. Wait a second. Where is it? There. Okay, like so. Switch back to the active camera, position it somewhere like that, and maybe make it. Oh, ah, come on. Ah, I like that. Okay. Um, just I now I want to move this uh, farther back, but now you can see that the transform widget here uh, doesn't point in the uh, global directions anymore. So if I uh, put this up, he uh, suddenly starts to float. So I'm going to fix that by choosing the align world, and now I can just. Whoa! What am I doing? Um, yeah, I'm just um, can transform it. Uh, the Android that's tripped over on the world axis and not on its local axis. Just flip it back and now we have our scene basically set up. Okay so now I feel this um, that the lights are very harsh on the, this um, scene so I'm going into the light again or main light I th should have named this main light and fill light. There we go and uh, just uh, decrease the intensity to maybe 75% and yeah, that looks way better. And maybe also in the properties of the Android model, just increase the specular reflections a little bit yeah, so that they feel a bit more like they're actually in the scene I've set up. So now we're coming to uh, my last point in this, um, the animation of several, op uh, of several parts of the model. model. So if we uh, open the Android 1 model here, we can see that we have one uh, main transform group. This one uh, transforms the whole Android and affects all of its part. But we also have several um, individual transform groups for every group we checked at the import of the model. So if I were to go in here, uh, you can see group no, group zero is uh, the left leg of the Android, and I could now move this separately and also keyframe this animation. But it doesn't really make sense to have its leg stand uh, beside him, so I will undo that. Um, I am in this uh, example wants in this example I want to um, animate his head, so we're going to group two. This is uh, his head, and in these transform properties, we can now animate the head individually so that he can turn his head and have the antennas moving with it. So for example, we go at the first frame, we will put a keyframe on the orientation and let it look a bit away from the camera and then after maybe five seconds we will make him look the other way from the camera. And this uh, principle of animating is uh, applicable to everything that you can animate. So you could animate him walking. Uh, we have the transform groups for the arms. So um, we have uh, group three, no, group four is the right arm. And if we want to make his arms moving, we can do so. For example, we can move this. Okay. Um, now you can see the anchor point of this uh, is not set up properly, so we want his arm not to move around the center of the arm, but uh, around the point where his shoulder should be. So we are going to go to the anchor point and we will push that up on the Y axis. Ah, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we will push that up on the Y axis so that the anchor point is at his shoulder and then we will Nope. We will uh, adjust the position of the arm so that it matches up again to what sh it should be. And now if we uh, edit the orientation, he is turning his arm around his shoulder like he should. Okay, I've said before that uh, those animations were the last point of this tutorial, but um, I just think uh, I can do one more thing, which is um, do some depth of field here, uh, because all uh, androids are currently perfectly in um, focus. So I'll go into the camera and 
turn on depth of field here and I think we have to do this in the Android as well let me just look for it okay actually we just have to go into this camera settings and uh, raise the value for the aperture a, a little bit to um, make the depth of field show up so now you can see that uh, the Android in front here is getting some blur and the one in the back as well and over here and the Android in the middle is uh, staying in focus as it's um, at least approximately uh, on the focal length of the camera. Okay, so I guess that's it for today's tutorial and um, the next step would be to incorporate this uh, 3D model into a real life scene by tracking uh, the scene and positioning the Android inside it so that it matches up. Um, I won't do a tutorial on that uh, because um, Imagineer Systems, the creators of Mocha HitFilm, um, already did an excellent tutorial about 70 minutes uh, on this. I will put the link in the description to um, that as well. And uh, they are positioning a telephone cell on a rooftop. So check this out if you want to know how to incorporate 3D models into a real life scene in HitFilm. <laughs> wow, congrats if you just sat through almost half an hour of me talking. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to give it a thumbs up, comment, and maybe even have a look around the other stuff on my channel. Until next time, bye! Okay, what is this here? <laughs> if I knew that, I would tell you. Did you just push the button?